Hi, and welcome to my series on learning 3D LUT Creator. Today we're going to be talking about editing and modifying LUTs, both ones that you might have made yourself, as well as ones that you might have bought or gotten somewhere else. And if you'd like to review all the material that we've covered so far in this series, I'm going to leave a link to the playlist up above. And as always, if you enjoy content like this and find it useful, I would truly appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. All right, let's get to today's video. So over the several months that I've been making these tutorials, I've been asked a couple of times if you can modify or edit pre-existing LUTs. The answer I'm glad to say is yes. Let's have a look. I'm going to bring an image into 3D LUT Creator from Photoshop. Now, there are really two questions wrapped up in one when it comes to the issue of can LUTs be edited after the fact? The first is, can you modify LUTs that you yourself have made in 3D LUT Creator? And the second is, can you modify a LUT that you might have purchased elsewhere? Let's start with a LUT that you might have made yourself, since that's the easiest one to demonstrate. But, not to cut to the chase, ultimately, I'm also going to show you how to modify a LUT that you might have purchased elsewhere. But let's start with the easier question. So, if you made a LUT in 3D LUT Creator yourself, you can modify it assuming that you've saved it. If you haven't saved it, you can't pull it somehow out of the LUT layer in Photoshop and bring it back into 3D LUT Creator. Once you've closed 3D LUT Creator and not saved it, that LUT is lost to modification. But if you have saved it, you can simply come up to File, Load Preset, and then you're given the folder that you uh, have denoted in the preferences as to where you want to save your LUTs. So this is a list of LUTs that I've saved. Let's just pick one. We'll pick that one. And we'll open it up. And we see a change in the photo. Again, I, it, it was just a LUT that I picked. So the change isn't incredibly drastic. But I'm going to press the backslash so we can see the original. And you see right up here it says before. I'm going to hit the backslash again. And this is the image that has been changed with the LUT applied to it. Now, you can see there's been some change here in the AB grid. You can see the changes we made in the volume tab that I made in the volume tab are still there. I made some changes in the channel mixer. I made some curves. And yes, these can all be modified if I want. So I can take the curve like this and like this, and I can make whatever changes I want. And I can either decide I want to save it. Well, we can come here. And you can decide that you want to export your 3D LUT file. That brings us to, again, that same folder where we were storing them. There's the LUT we used. We can keep that LUT intact. We can name this Trees Final Modified as a cube file. We can save it. And then, if we hit Control N to start a new LUT, we're back to the original photo. And if we come here and see Load Preset, we now have our Trees Final, which was the one we imported. And we also have our modified LUT file. So if you've made the LUT yourself, it's very easy to bring the LUT back in, all the changes that you made remain intact on the grid. You can make them modified and save it as a new version if you'd like. But what about LUTs that you might have purchased elsewhere? Good question. And the answer is yes, you can edit them with some minor limitations, which I'll show you. So I've taken a couple of sample LUTs that I got from elsewhere some time ago. To be honest, I don't really remember from who or where I got them. And I put them in a folder on my desktop. So let's see what happens if we try the same way of editing as we did with the LUTs that I made by myself. 
So I'm going to come over here, File, Load Preset, and I'm going to navigate to my desktop. And where did I put them? I put them in here. And let's take this LUT and click Open. And waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and nothing happens. You can't load somebody else's LUT in this way. Now, honestly, I don't know how 3D LUT Creator can tell. I don't know what kind of protections are built in. But you can't load it as your own preset, independent of which folder you take it from. So it appears that you can't edit somebody else's LUT or a LUT that you got from elsewhere. Well, you can, but you have to know a little trick. And the trick is that instead of doing it the way you did your own by loading preset, instead you go to the masking interface and we look right here. And all of a sudden here, it's talking about an external LUT. So that's a LUT that's coming from another source. So let's go to Load LUT. And now let's try this same LUT futuristic bleak. We're going to open it. And now we've got the LUT loaded and active. So the trick is you have to come here and load the LUT as an external LUT. But remember I said there were some minor issues, and the minor issues are this. If we go to the grids, you can see that while the LUT loads with its full effect, the actual settings that were used don't load, just the effect. So you can't see what the author of the LUT actually did to get it there. You just have the LUT loaded. Now, that said, let's make a change that's very evident. That said, you can continue to edit from here. So, for example, you know, again, this isn't going to look good. I'm just trying to make it look like something we can identify. So I can make this massive change in it. And now I can come here, File. I should have said Export 3D LUT File, so it goes into my folder here. It's labeled Empty Preset. Uh, we can name this Futuristic Bleak Modified. And we can save that. So just to show that it all works, I'm going to hit Control N. We're going to start a new LUT. That'll bring us back to the original photo. We can come here now to load preset. That brings us to the folder where we save this futuristic bleak modified. And we can choose that and open it and get right back to where we were. Now you'll notice two things. The first is that when I opened it up and reapplied it, the changes that I made are still on this grid for me to modify. You know, again, I can do whatever I want to it. And the second thing is that if I were to reset it, it resets, but it still applies the original author's LUT. So the original author's LUT isn't lost when I modified it. It's still there. It's just that I made a change, you know, on top of it. Now, before finishing, I do have to admit that I said something previously that wasn't entirely true. And that is that I had said that you can't get to what the original LUT author actually did or make modifications to his original 3D LUT grid changes. And that's not entirely so. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go and reset this back to our original. And I'm going to now come to the masking tab. And we are going to load that original LUT that we did before, Futuristic Bleak. There's the effect. 
Now, I had said, look, if you go to the channels, the volume, there's nothing there. And you can't see anything that they did. But if we come here, back to our little grid here where we loaded the external LUT, we see this little tricky drop-down menu, and the 3D LUT creator has them hidden all over. And here we see extract RGB curves from the external LUT and extract channel mixer from external LUT. What we don't see is extract volume from external LUT, extract AB or CL or 2D curves from external LUT. But we do see these curves and the channel mixer. So let's see what happens. So let's come up here and click on Extract RGB Curves from External LUT. And come on back and Extract Channel Mixer from External LUT. And let's see what we have. Well, if we go to the Curves tab, we actually now see the adjustments that the original author made in the RGB curves. I don't see any changes up here in these curves, and I'm not sure if they would be extracted or not from an edited LUT that you got from elsewhere. I'm, I'm just not 100% certain. We come to the Channels tab, we see what changes the original author made in the channel mixer. Now, interestingly, not only are we presented with the curves that were made, but for example, here we're on the red channel, we can actually directly edit the curves that the original author had made. Likewise, we can come to the channel mixer and make those changes as well. Now, I was interested in, in you know, maybe there just simply were no changes in the ABCL and 2D curves and the volume tab in this particular LUT. But I did experiment and I loaded several external LUTs, and at no time in that original drop-down menu was I given the option ever to extract the information from these curves. So I suspect that you can't, but still, it's very quite interesting. It is quite interesting that you can see what the original author did in terms of curves and in the channel mixer and make direct edits, and then if we want to, we can take those direct edits that we made and we can export the 3D LUT file and we can save it as futuristic bleak mod 2 and we can save it and we can come here have a new LUT, and now we can go to our own LUTs. There we go. Well, I do hope that you found that useful and that it answers any questions you might have had about how to edit LUTs that you've gotten from elsewhere out on the internet, either someone gave to you or you might have purchased somewhere. And, you know, it really helps me out if you find content like this useful. I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. And if you have a couple seconds, why not drop a comment as well? We'll see you next time.